A while back we did a video where we spooled up a turbocharger using the water jet and we had a weather balloon on the outlet end of it. After doing that video, we really wanted to do a supercharger, but a supercharger would be a lot harder to hook up. We just, we were lazy and we didn't want to figure it out until this showed up on our doorstep. The hard part about hooking up a supercharger to fill up a balloon is usually they bolt right on top of like an intake and then we'd have to create some kind of adapter plate or something. But this already has something that we can stretch the balloon over so it makes it easy. And this was graciously donated to us by a local quail farmer who also has a car junkyard, I guess. Because it's the I same guy so. who gave us that transmission over there that we cut up. He works on British cars and has parts and stuff. This is out of a 2004 Mini Cooper S. His 2004 Mini Cooper S. It still works, but it's got a bearing in the back that's going bad or something. He said it was way more expensive to rebuild it than it was to just get a used one from a, a junkyard. So now we have it. Now we'll make the bearing go bad. Real bad. First step, we need to get a way to turn water jet power into circle power. Those are the scientific terms for it. I think it. we're going to cut a gear so we have a little more grip water grip <laughs> water grip to spin <laughs> There's the final touch. This is a smoke bomb. So it'll just start billowing out bluish smoke and I kinda wanna see how it uh, gets sucked in there. It'll also fill up the balloon with a bunch of smoke. I don't know, could be cool. So when the balloon pops, it should be like one big smoke bomb. Yes. Looking at some diagrams online, it looks like this is supposed to spin clockwise, which means we're gonna have to come in this direction. Hopefully that works. Oh yeah, I can see that that, can see a little that works. So when we did the turbocharger, turbochargers spin like 100,000 RPM. Mm -hmm. These are driven off of a belt and spin way slower, but still generate quite a bit of airflow. So if we spin it just as fast, you think this will inflate quicker? I'm I'm thinking this is going to inflate a lot quicker than the turbocharger did, but there's only one way to find out. That balloon popped way prematurely. Just inside the edge right there, I found a piece of balloon that looked like it was somehow inside the, the worm gears in there. How would that have happened? We're also thinking that maybe the smoke affected the integrity of the balloon is it like stiff now yeah i think it sucked in a bunch when it popped oh yeah that's like all bound up there's some little tiny pieces we've got it mostly cleared out new balloon we're gonna support it with the table this time this one brand new out of the package 
should be stronger. Yes. Well, I think we ruined the supercharger, so we're just going to end up cutting that in half now. Uh, if you really wanted to see a giant balloon blow up, then our turbocharger video is the video for you. But if you want to see Mitchell stretch this one over his head and fill it up with his nose, then this is the video for you. Is this even possible? <laughs> So in doing that, we mistakenly learned something. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Don't do that again. <laughs> so that, we were filling that up with that air compressor line, which is 90 PSI. It's, it's a lot of air. And I was disappointed with our turbocharger video that this balloon didn't fill up faster than it did. But comparing it to how fast that filled up, filled up the balloon, the turbocharger was moving way more air than that. Yeah, a lot more. That's just, that's just crazy in my mind. Now, only thing we have left to do is cut this in half, probably diagonally, because that'll be cool. Big reveal. Uh oh. The balloon's in pieces. Losing Something some... like that lot got dropped in the tank. So, this would, if it's spun in anymore, it would have directly spun this. Yeah, so your front pulley gear spins that, which has a gear that attaches both of the compressor blade things together. You can see the shape of the compressor wheels better on this side. When these come together, that fits in there, like, perfectly. There was probably some, some maths that were involved in making that happen. Maybe like two maths. So what a supercharger does is it uses these, I keep calling them worm, worm gears, but I think they're called like compressor blade type things, right? I don't know anything. <laughs> don't ask me. These compressor blades, they, they kind of channel the air through these grooves and it just kind of like squeezes the air from one end to the other end so it's forcing it eventually out here yeah that's the output so it's it's taking it from this input side squeezing it all down and then letting the air out there which then goes into the intake it's just crazy how tight the tolerances are on that it's a miracle we've got this side to move as much as it does we don't want to go too far or else all these ball bearings will fall out. Can you get your fingers on the back side? And... That sounds dangerous. <laughs> and that's kind of a cool view. With how hard I was hitting it, I doubt you'll be able to just spin it with your finger. Yeah. And that is how a supercharger works. I don't know if I fully understand, but I do understand that you can go to the copperfinger.com forward slash BOGO and get buy one, get one free copper fingers. And if you want to see the copper finger ad we made last week, you can go to our last week's video. It happens about halfway through. Or maybe we'll figure out a way to stick it on the buy one, get one free page so you can watch it there on the website. Go check it out.